Magic Kate Ebony. Hope you're doing well. We're on episode 18. Hope you're loving the chat so far. Follow me on socials. Kidding, you don't have to. I'm not your real mum. But yeah, last episode I spoke to Lewis and Henry De Jong from Alien Weaponry and we had a great chat. And I think that despite them being very young, they're very well versed in the metal scene and very well listened as well. Yeah, so it was really cool to hear from them that I really should have heard Lamb of God's album Ashes of the Wake by now. That was the one metal album I absolutely had to listen to, so I did it. I followed the listening notes, which were to listen to it while going to sleep. That was kind of cool, a cool way to listen to an album. I like that. And yeah, good album. I wouldn't necessarily say that I guess this style of music is my favorite, but Lamb of God were a lot groovier than I expected them to be. I don't really know what I imagined, but for some reason I didn't imagine such cool grooves. So there we go, I learned something new already. But I did hear what Henry was saying about the drums and how they accentuated the riffs or the vocals. I think that was really cool. You know, they weren't overdone and they weren't underdone. They were perfect. And I think the vocals were really interesting to listen to as well because, yeah, you could hear the lyrics clear as day. And he sounds really good too, especially the spoken word parts. And I don't know, maybe some people think it's a bit cheesy, but he's got a great voice and it sounds so cool. And it kind of makes me wonder if they do that live as well. I would assume not, but I think that would be pretty theatrical if he did, you know, the spoken word live leading into the track. Anyway, my favorite songs, I really liked One Gun. I think that was great. And I really liked Laid to Rest as well, which I guess is the most popular one on the album. What is it? 85 million streams on Spotify. Whew. Yeah, but I would say that I guess this album or this type of metal isn't really my vibe entirely, but it's cool to listen to and I'm glad I have. So yeah, big thanks to the Alien Weaponry Boys for coming on and educating me. But let's move on. Alrighty, on this episode of Educate Ebony, I'd love to introduce Aiden Zov Zovic and Jordan McQuitty. They are a couple of members from the new metalcore band Dreg. And I heard and saw you guys for the first time at Big Sound 2019. And, you know, just can't forget you guys after that. That was a hell of a time. Very hard to describe this band, so I'm not going to try to. But you should just check out their new track, Trunks, or Internet from earlier this year for more of an understanding. But yeah, Zov and Jordan, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Great to have you guys. Nice intro. Oh, of course. Got to, you know, flutter, yeah. flutter you earlier on. Yeah, pump us up. No, thank you. That was, yeah, that was nice. Yeah. So you were saying before you recorded that you guys have similar tastes in music, but very, very different. Did you argue about what albums you're going to choose or you're just sort of like, you do you, man. I'm going to do something totally different. Pretty much. Like, <laughs> I don't think you said one album that I wanted to do or I said one album that you wanted to do. I think Zov hadn't actually heard of the album that I'm picking. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, I honestly thought we would have, like, something near close to the same because, yeah, like, whenever we're together, like, we'll be talking about albums that we've have just dropped or something, and you're like, oh, this goes hard. But, I mean, our MP isn't, like, too far from each other, but it was still, like, a, a bit different compared to what I thought he was going to go for. Interesting, interesting. Well, I'm ready. Like, tell me, what is the one metal album I need to hear? Mine's The Kids We Used To Be by Your Demise. Okay. Mine's Plagues by The Devil Wears Prada. Oh, all right, well, um, I've never heard of Your Demise and I've also never really listened to The Devil Wears Prada, which I'm really disappointed in myself for. So tell me, why these albums? Mine, like, I remember knowing about this band and not fully getting into them. And then it was, I think, 2012, they played Soundwave and after seeing it live and they were, like, touring that record. And, um, yeah, just watching the atmosphere of, like, everyone dancing around, like, Two step and big riffs, sing alongs, like people just going crazy. It was just like, whoa. And then checking out the album recorded, obviously, I've seen it live, being mind blown, and like listening to the, the record. And I was like, this is sick. The vocalist just has really cool flow. It's kind of like a punk hardcore band, and the vocalist is like still yelling, screaming, doing his thing, but he's just got really nice bars and flows and like just sounds really good. Yeah. <laughs> cool. What about The Devil Wears Prada? Plagues is like their second release. I think it was released in like 2007. So the first time I heard one of their songs off it was on YouTube and the song is called HTML Rules Dude, but it's <laughs> spelt like all whack and every letter is like lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, uppercase. And I was like, what is this song title? And I remember watching it on YouTube and just freaking out because it was probably one of the first bands I got into. And I was like, I don't know what this music is. Like it's whack. And then pretty much... 
I don't know, illegally downloaded the album off LimeWire. Yes. <laughs> and literally, like, every song is so different from the next. There's heavy breakdowns, there's melodic singing, there's slow parts, there's heavy as hell parts. There's a song called Dogs Can Grow Beards All Over, I'm pretty sure, on that album. <laughs> what? And, like, just the song titles were just whacked, man. I'm like, this band's, like, seems like heavy dudes, but they got, like, weird song titles, and the music was just ridiculous like if you listen to it like tonight or tomorrow you'll be like for 2007 music like this is still relevant now yeah and like they were doing something completely different back then with melodic singing as well even when I listen to it now I'm like I don't know how these dudes thought of this stuff back then like it was just crazy to think all their albums are pretty good but I like the earliest stuff the most oh I see a cat guys sorry this this is the best interview ever I love this (laughs) <laughs> I'm a big fan, FYI. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's oh, storm, but um, yeah, sorry about that. Keep, don't yeah, apologize. Keep it there. That. Yes. Uh, yes. You do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah, come on. Up here. Come on. I'm going to keep that in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's so cool. Do you guys remember the first time that you heard these albums? Or oh, obviously, first time on YouTube and then LimeWire. What about you, Zov? Yeah, so that was Your Demise's second album. I remember listening to their first album, not hectically, but like being like, oh yeah, there are some really cool tracks on here. Uh, when they did Soundwave touring, I went and saw them there and that's when I went back and I didn't actually legally download it. I, I liked having CDs, so I went down to, oh fuck, who knows, back in that day. But like, yeah, Sanity maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, and then... Yeah, I remember that just being like the most played thing for like probably like a month, a month and a half. Just did not stop listening to it. Are these from like the same era? Because what, Plagues came out in 2007, you said, and then roughly? That album came out in 2010. Interesting. So do you reckon that you chose these albums because, I guess, sentimental value, you know, growing up, teenage-ish years, because it's not often that someone's like on the podcast so far that someone's picked an album that's like within the last five years or so. Yeah. Uh, mine's a bit sentimental, I guess. Yeah, Devil West Prada are probably one of my top bands growing up. Um, they, weren't, they weren't the first heavy band that I listened to, but I still, to this day, listen to them just as much as anyone else. Not the biggest fan of their latest stuff, but their earlier stuff is still pretty high up there in terms of albums and sound and how it was. Yeah, just essential. you gotta, you got to listen to it so you can hear where everyone else comes from, I guess. Yeah, and especially too because they're a Christian band, so I was thinking about God. Like, really? These, and I didn't know what Christian metal was or metalcore back then. I was just like, oh, I can't really understand what they're saying because they're screaming their heads off. And then when I like read the lyrics or you know eventually got the CD and read through the booklet, I was like, wait, they're singing a lot of stuff about God. I'm like, I didn't really match them up together. I was like, Christianity and metal, like that's you don't really seem like it should be together. And I was, I guess, naive as a 13 year old, but heaps of bands that are Christian. Yeah. Yeah. It's not something that you really realize until you actually read the lyrics or, or something else for sure. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a belief as well. And I still froth, like love that band, regardless of what they're singing about. I still think they're awesome. Yeah. And the kids we used to be by your demise of sentimental. It must be right. That is. Yeah. Like just like a lot of the songs he wrote about, like when I was that age felt like, I guess super relevant to just like, beefing out with homies or tripping over like life not being like you know just being upset and depressed about life and just like him just being a real dude and just like yeah I'm writing about these songs and you just yeah sticks with you and I was even looking at the lyrics the other day because I was like is this the album that I want to do and looking back and just reading them I'm like man it's so sentimental because I listen to these songs and I'm like I still can feel this way about the world or about people or about like nostalgia or about so many different sort of things is why he has a very diverse I guess uh track listing of what he sings about and yeah the way I can still feel about it 11 years down the track you're just like all right just a really nice piece of art that I don't think I'll ever not love listening to yeah that's huge and like obviously because you guys are in a band as well together so did these albums influence you guys and your music style or you were like I love how they do that let's try and incorporate some of that into our stuff not really no honestly like I've never really referenced the Devil Wears Prada track or gone yeah I want the band to I guess sound like them in any you know any way shape or form but obviously still probably get influence from them in my subconscious when I'm playing certain things when I first started listening to music it was more metal based and more heavy yeah like Adelaide Dying your 
Devil Wears Pradas, your Kill Switch Engages, all those kind of metal bands. But then later on, like 15, 16 years old, that's when I got more into hardcore. And that's what I think stuck with me over the last 10 years. So when we, when I write riffs or like write music, it comes from more of a hardcore punk background rather than a metal background, even though I got into metal first. Yeah, interesting. Cool progression. What about you, Zov? I mean, kind of, because like we are like a, a punk hardcore band. So like a lot of, I guess, riffs and stuff like that i could see like definitely similar to your demise for sure but yeah not really as well just because like not too down at home but the shit we do is like <laughs> different compared to like what was happening back then i feel like and not to talk shit on any of those bands and not trying to say that ours is better but it's just like there was a point in time i feel like where a lot of hardcore bands and stuff like that had a, any sort of bands kind of had a lot of the same sort of structure where it's like i don't know i feel like the bands nowadays are just doing weird and different shit which is still all cool but yeah, I guess to root back to that original question, like, I guess we take some sort of influence being a, a hardcore band, but not entirely, no. As Jordan said, I would never reference your demise as, as Dreg. I feel bad now because I called you guys a new metalcore band in my intro. Oh, calls whatever the fuck you want. Like, I, <laughs> I, I call Jordan's, like, the Devil Wears Pride metalcore, I call that hardcore. Like, oh, Slayer hardcore. Like, I, it's all hardcore. It's or all metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some genres are so confusing. Oh, I know. I definitely agree. Yeah. Well, is there a certain point or like time in your lives where you were listening to these albums and you were like, yeah, this is pretty important or it's is definitely, definitely going to be an album that I listen to for life. Five ever. If you guys remember that meme. Five ever. Um, no, I don't You've remember never seen either. the meme? Guy. No, okay. No. You got to YouTube afterwards. <laughs> Just YouTube okay. five uh, ever. It's hilarious. I think looking back now and like me listening to that album, like at school and stuff on my like, I didn't even have an iPod. I had some other branded iPod, but I can't remember what it was. I think it was called an iRiver. Oh, I remember just, yes. <laughs> iRiver, you remember it? Yeah, yeah I, I had one of those. And I remember just like getting the songs off LimeWire or somehow putting it onto my iRiver and walking around school with it. And then I didn't really think about it. I was just like, oh, I really like these bands and they're cool and whatever I thought. But now looking back, you know, as my 14-year-old self, I'm like, it was a pretty important time. and I guess I probably took for granted listening to music as easily as I could. Yeah. But like even now it's so much easier to consume music. So all these kids that are like 14, 15 with their iPhones can literally listen to any band. But now I'm like, oh, I was supporting the Devil Wears Prada back when they probably didn't have anything, even though I downloaded their, their album illegally. <laughs> in my life. But I bought one of their shirts at their show. I went to their shows and ended up buying their CDs and stuff. And but now looking back now, I'm like, definitely was super important. Yeah, I guess same for me as well. Like, yeah, we, we were at a time where it's like you didn't have streaming platforms and it's like you couldn't just check out so much different stuff throughout the day. So having that on a CD and having it with my CD player in my room. And I was in high school, so I'm doing homework. And I'm just listening to that album while I'm just chilling in my room. I had a Discman as well because I had broken iPod, unfortunately. So I went to a Discman for a little bit, but took that with me as well. And I was just like, yeah, I feel like that album would never lose any sentimental value to me, especially with how it made me feel while seeing it live and how it makes me feel when I listen to just the record regardless. It can either put me in like a kind of bad mood or like sad mood because it's just like sometimes it's like a bit of a hit to home. But then like I remember once we we're on a tour and it was early hours in the morning, sun was coming up and just put it on and like just moved into like half an hour of the drive and it was just like, ah, it's sick. Everyone's G'd up and we're good to go. So yeah, I don't think it's ever going to lose its uh, lose its taste for me. Yeah. I feel like back then as well, if you found a cool band, it's like you worked for that. Like, you know, you had to go find it somewhere, download it, find it wherever. You can't just like log on online and just do a little quick search before the internet or, you know, whenever. So, yeah, it's like hard one. Yeah, and like you'd download the wrong file and it'd be like the YouTube <laughs> version. Or, yeah. Or it'd have like a clip before it that would go for like a minute and you're like trying to work <laughs> So you're like, come on, this is the YouTube version. Or <laughs> yeah. Or like their music video would cut for some other scene and you're like, yeah. there's like, ah, <laughs> goes back to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. What was it? Who was it? Um, I think it was in Jack from Void of Visions episode where he was like, that's how Soldier Boy got famous. He just put his stuff up, labeled it something else that everyone loved, like what, Beyonce or whatever, and got his stuff out there. That's genius. Hilarious. Very smart. Take some hints there if you ever need. Not that LimeWire is still around. Yeah, that... Is it? No. Yeah, I don't know. Spotify and Apple Music are too easy to access. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so when I listen to these albums, is there an aspect that you guys love 
that you reckon, well, for example, that I would overlook or that the regular listener will overlook? Is there like a cool beat? Or you said before with the Your Demise album that the flow was really good. What should I be looking out for? When you play the first track, turn it the fuck up. It's <laughs> like, it's just, <laughs> it's just a real good G up track. Like you were just like, yeah, it's just got sing along, like two step, like mosh. It's, it's side to side. It's, it's sick. But yeah, I don't know. Just go in, I guess, go into it without the perspective I just gave you and take it for what it is and just see, I guess, if it, you enjoy it as much as I do. Like, I obviously I've told you like the aspects that I think that, you know what I mean? There's cool punk and hardcore elements. And then there's Ed who's got his cool rap flow. Actually, funnily enough, I could be wrong. We might have to fact check that, but I'm pretty sure that track number nine, Shine On, features the Devil Wears Prada's vocals. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's yeah. I, just, I didn't even think about that until, yeah, yeah. I mean, if we can fact check that, but like, yeah, I'm fairly certain it is. So I guess keep your eyes out for that as well, or ears. I look at Plagues and it's like, yeah, featuring Singer of Your Demise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shine On. Yeah, featuring, how do you say his last Mike name? Veronica. Mike Veronica. Veronica. Yeah, of the Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. Oh, so actually, sad. yeah, I completely. That, <laughs> I, that, I was listening to that album today, and I was like, "Yeah, this is so tough." And I was like, "Oh, I forgot to even tell Jordan that." <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, I guess just go into it, enjoy the however many minutes it is, and just yeah, see if you vibe with it. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And what about plagues? I mean, think of it as it's fifteen, well, nearly fifteen years old. So think for the time how it sounds and I guess the different elements of the whole album in terms of yeah like I said before heaviness the clean singer's voice is like ridiculous like octaves like ridiculous I got synths they got oh they've just got a bit of everything so if you are into like heavy music you'll hopefully appreciate that it's got so much different stuff going on but still works for an album especially back then Mm. Music question for someone who isn't in a band and doesn't do any production-y sort of things ever, except for this, this is very different. But like when people say, um, you know, it came out 15 or so years ago and the mixing and the mastering and the production still sounds really fresh, do other albums not sound modern? Or like has something changed in, in that, well, they do it differently? I don't know what I'm saying, but you know what I mean? Can you tell if an album's old in other ways? I'm not probably the person to talk to about production or master or anything. That's more Sam. I don't know much about that kind of stuff. I just play the guitar and go, yeah, this sounds cool. Can <laughs> put it in the computer and make it sound better. But I mean, back then, but even still now, there's more heart in the music because they obviously had to get in a room together, write out all this stuff and record this album over however long. Whereas these days, someone can just literally plug their guitar into their laptop, play something with over some basic beat and then chuck it on the internet, whereas they had to work super, super hard for it, regardless of who mixed and mastered it. But there's more heart in it and more probably soul, soul is the wrong word to use for a metal band. But yeah, it's more organic. Even bands that have really bad mixing mastering, like I listen to 90s punk bands, 80s punk bands with terrible mixing and whatever, but I appreciate it just as much as I do a perfectly clean record because I know that's what they were like that what they had back then yeah and the struggle they might have been going through like listening to bands like Minor Threat back in the day they probably just recorded in this shitty room in um Washington or wherever it was and that's all they did but you can just tell that they they loved it and it was organic and yeah like I listen to live albums more than I do normal albums generally interesting yeah I don't think I've ever listened to an album and been like oh you know, the production wasn't very good. I don't think I know how to recognize that. Can you recommend an album that... <laughs> no, <laughs> that's bad. Uh, no, an no, album, I no. think, that you could maybe say, like, from, like another hardcore band from back in the day was, like, Bad Brains' self-titled album. Okay. Kind of, like, the same sort of, like, recording, like, yeah, just kind of slapped it together. Right. But it still sounds super sick to this day. Like, you listen to it and you're like, all right, yeah, that's Jordan. So they just put... You can just yeah. tell that it's, like, they've done it. And it's like, yeah, we put a lot of... Soul into it, yeah. You can say soul. <laughs> Fuck it. The more hardcore attitude towards recording, whereas like I think metal bands are a bit more polished, whereas hardcore bands are just like crazy dudes that are just like, yeah, like I'll just plug my guitar into my, you know, cab or whatever and just play it through the speaker. And even if I stuff up a note, just keep it in the recording just because like that's punk kind of back then. It's real. Yeah. Still though, Devil Wears Prada's album's done really well and I think it's close to perfect. Yeah. Oh, deep. 
No, but it obviously stands up for you guys, these albums, but why would it stand up, I guess, for other listeners and me? Like, why would it stand up past this year into the future? I guess the Your Demise album was like, he writes about like nostalgia, like memories, just kind of being like, oh, just remember to like hold on to your youth and sort of stuff like that. So like, I feel like any young kid getting into the hardcore metal scene or even any older people even just like to reminisce just be like oh yeah just reminisce about like the good old days and that's what i guess the title track like the kids we used to be just like remember those like always remember the youth memories and it's like i guess it's just i don't know kind of something that you should just leave in your head and it's like don't ever forget those sort of things i feel like that's just a super important lesson always that it's just like don't get so caught up in everything like people are like oh you can't change your past don't worry about it but just like think about it every now and then let your mind go back to there like yeah. Six shit would have happened when you were growing up. And I guess if people can relate to that as well, that's that's tight. But it's also like I think their most popular album, if you will. So I don't think it's ever going to go away if you look for the Your Demise discography. Well, actually, it's not even on Spotify. So that's a fucking lie. But really? you can, you can, you, yeah, sorry. I should have, Gigi, you got to, you're going to have to listen to that on YouTube. Oh, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Go, um, you go on LimeWire and go download it legally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah anyway that you can listen to it like yeah i definitely think it will still be an important album another 10 years down the track as well i think for yeah plagues it'd be different elements throughout the whole album heaviness softness singing screaming instruments are ridiculous there's obviously christianity behind it so if you are believing you know god it's gonna speak to you with that as well but yeah i think in the next yeah, 10 15 20 years it's going to be still relevant to metal Awesome. Awesome. And this is where the real homework comes in because what are my listening notes? How do I need to listen to these albums? How? Yeah. Do I need to do something? Uh, lots of people say gym because they're, you know, just upbeat or drive or, or what, what am I doing? How do I, how would you listen to it? What's the ideal, you know, you sit down or you do something and this is the album that you put on. Take your time. Tough question. Ask them the tough questions. Yeah. Ask a lot of my guests. <laughs> I mean, like, Maybe clean the house because it's got like a lot of fast riffs, like fast, like two step riffs. Like you kind of like want to just like, oh yeah, bounce around, like feel the energy of it. So maybe, yeah, if you want to vacuum, broom, dishes, make the bed, anything you kind of really want to do. Like I feel like it will just pump you up to want to do it 10 times quicker. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's cool. I don't know, in all honesty, because like you could say, yeah, go for a run and listen to it. But then at the same time, I'm like, you could just chill on your bed and just listen away and just let the chaos. Cause I think if you did something too chaotic while you were doing it, you would miss a lot of things. So maybe then running wouldn't be a good option. Cause you're probably going to get tired and you want to, you know, get puffed just, because I can't run. Yeah. <laughs> just chilling on your bed. You might be like, be able to take in all the little sneaky bits in, in the album and maybe appreciate the instrumentation in it and be like, Oh, that was really cool. Whereas you might get distracted and be like, oh, wait, what was that bit? You might have to replay it again. So I'd say just lie on your bed and listen to it. Awesome. Love it. Would well, you guys have anything else to add about these albums that I should know before we wrap it up? Mm, no. Not to my knowledge. They've got some cool music videos and like all their other shit they've done is real sick. The album before that has a different front man. So like it's a completely different vibe. So if you want to suss that, that's sick. And even the album art is kind of real different as well. They're, yeah, they got like a pretty cool discography to, to check out if you wanted to look at more of it as well. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything else with Plagues. Just look at the song titles and just be like, yeah, what? Have a bit of a laugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it like, seems like, like such a serious band. And then when you read their song titles, like it's just like they got a song called Hey John, What's Your Name Again? <laughs> why <laughs> like like this stupid stuff like that and like they got another song that's called this song is called wow can't question genius you know yeah yeah i think that's the boss <laughs> yeah. oh that sounds so good yeah have a sauce of the titles and then just remember that they're like were well, i don't know if they still actually sing about a lot of christianity but back then it was a lot of it was very um religious based awesome well there we have it the Two metal albums that Aiden Zovzovic and Jordan McQuitty of Dreg think that you and I should listen to are The Kids We Used To Be by Your Demise and Plagues by The Devil Wears Prada. Guys, thank you so much for your wisdom. I can't wait to listen to these ones from your points of view. Awesome. Thank you for having us. It's been sick having a chat. Before we also go, um, 
uh, Zov, what's the name of your cat? <gasps> you guys both have cats. Oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me the names. Mine's Storm. I've got two. Oh, well, technically got three at the moment. What? This is Carter. Carter. <laughs> Human name. I don't know how I feel about that, but that's okay. <laughs> We got a, another cat. I don't know where she is. Her name's Yumi. Cute. Which is like Japanese for ocean or something. Aww. And um, me and my girlfriend, we foster cats. So we actually have like a five-year-old rag doll right now. <sighs> um, he's in the spare room, just chilling. His name's Toby. Toby. <laughs> 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 this is great. Cats are the best. I'm glad we've had this chat. <laughs> cats are the best. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're big cat people. Perfect. Yeah. You guys are my new favorite band, so. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>